Finding Happy, Seven Steps to Relationships That Will Not Steal Your Joy is the new book by me, Nikita Banks, a licensed psychotherapist and life strategist. Leverage the knowledge you'll receive in this book to help you with the process of obtaining absolute clarity through the use of guided self-exploration. This process is necessary to help you master all your relationships in 2019 and beyond. Go on Amazon.com or BlackTherapistPodcast.com and grab your copy of the book guaranteed to help you redesign all your relationships based on two basic principles, health and happiness. Get your copy today. Welcome to the Black Therapist Podcast. The Black Therapist Podcast is a podcast where we discuss the unique issues people of color face when dealing with mental health issues and mental health diagnosis. Now, if you are new to our show, I am your host, author, life strategist, and psychotherapist, Nikita Banks, in private practice in my hometown of Brooklyn, New York. I am available for both psychotherapy and coaching sessions, and you can find more information about that on my website, NikitaBanks.com. You can listen to our podcast everywhere podcasts are found, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, Pippa, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and BlackTherapistPodcast.com. If you are a mental health advocate or a therapist and you want to buy our podcast merchandise, you can do so by visiting our site. And if you want access to our free mental health tips, free online trainings, discounted selective services, and resources, do so by joining our mailing list by texting "get happy" all one word to six six eight six six. If you love the podcast, please like, comment, and share. We love to hear from you, and if you want to send me some feedback, guest suggestions, or simply to say hey, you can contact us at our website, BlackTherapistPodcast.com. Please be mindful that this episode and all of the information that we provide here is just a resource and a tool to help get you started on your mental health journey. If you are feeling any mental health distress or you are having any significant issues, please feel free to reach out to us so that we can find you a mental health provider in your area. Okay, let's go. Hey guys. So I hope you guys are um, doing well and maintaining um trying to find some sense of normalcy (sighs) holding on to your sanity (laughs) in this new normal you know I I feel like there are are several types of people who are dealing with this whole ordeal there are the people who are um, actually quarantining and taking this really seriously there are the people who may have mental health issues like OCD. OCD is a real thing, um, which if you don't know, obsessive compulsive disorder. And so for for them, you know, washing their hands and thinking that there are germs on it or invisible things that they can't see is a really, really, really real thing. And so if you're dealing with anxiety, if you're dealing with depression, this new normal will kick up so if you have not heard this show before um i am a mental health professional and my office is in brooklyn new york i am a brooklyn knight but i do a die till i die and so you know to find out that we're now in the epicenter of where this outbreak is in the u.s is very scary it's also sobering it's also you know making me think differently about how I interact with others and so yeah it's 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 a lot it's a lot mentally it's a lot you know my disappointment in my community because I'm going to speak about my community is the fact that a lot of black people don't seem to be taking this seriously yes I call it you know the Rona or Bologna (laughs) um you know and obviously I'm talking about the coronavirus and not corona queens shout out to corona queens um which is a it's a it's a town here in Queens New York but I'm really taking this seriously right I have a I have a son who has really bad asthma he's had pneumonia several times in his life at one point he had pneumonia double pneumonia he had it in both lungs and so I can't imagine him getting a respiratory 
illness. And so I'm really taking this seriously. Unfortunately, I don't really feel like a lot of people are taking this seriously. Like, I get it. We live in a land of the free and a home of the brave, right? But there's there's a thing about being respectful to your fellow man. There's a thing about being community engaged. There's, there's a social responsibility that we all have to each other that we just kind of have to be careful. And I feel like our people are not taking it as serious as we can. I have friends who I know who have absolutely no reason to be outside. When I say absolutely no reason to be outside, I don't mean that they don't have to go to a grocery store or that they don't have to go to doctor's offices or they're not, there's not family members that they have to check on, right? I'm not talking about that type of stuff. But I'm talking about like they, they don't have jobs now that you physically have to go to. Thank God I no longer have a job that I physically have to go to. But I also made the financial decision that even if I, when I did have a job that I had to go to, I just was not going to do it. So um, I work in my private practice. That's fine. As far as I'm concerned, you know, if I'm not needed by my clients for the next two weeks, I would just not have clients for the next two weeks. Financially, would I take a hit? Sure. Mentally, can I take the break? Absolutely. Um Will my bills get paid? Yes. So like, I, you know, I won't be up, but I will be OK for the next two weeks if I decide not to not to work with my clients. But I also have a consulting job that I do with mentally ill clients. And that job consisted of me going into the hospitals to see clients. And that job also consisted of me going into the, these clients homes to see them. The majority of the seriously mentally ill clients that I see, they live with elderly parents. I said this on last week's episode. And in one of my hospitals in particular, our, the psychiatric unit and the maternity ward is on the same floor. So can you imagine me having this virus and going in to see a client and I'm, you know, unknowingly infect a mother or a father going to see the maternity ward? Like, no, 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 no. Or, or somebody infecting me and then me bringing something home to my son. It's, the risk for me is just not worth it. Do I think that we'll all survive this? Possibly. Possibly, right? But I don't think that we're understanding the, the fact that for the city of New York, with city of like millions, 8 million, 7 million people, I don't, I don't even know how many million people live here, Right. Number one, we live on top of one another. Number two, not a lot of us have, you know, separate living quarters. You may have your our own rooms, but we share bathrooms. We share kitchen spaces, those kinds of things like this. Not, you know, we are a pedestrian city, but we're a pedestrian city of people who live really in close quarters. If we're not taking this seriously and staying off the street, millions, city of millions, and we have 3,000 ICU beds, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think we get it. And I've been to these hospitals. I know that a lot of the, the medical staff and the medical personnel that we have, they are older, they are foreign, they are, you know, and shout out to the immigrants that work really hard to be here. They take good care of us. And so there are so many things that I think a lot of us are just taking for granted and going outside and just living our lives. And it's not that type of time. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I'm me personally. I'm just not on that type of time. I ain't got it. I'm never going to get it. it. It is what it is. Like, I can't imagine bringing something home. And, you know, if you're listening to me, I really hope that you guys are taking this seriously. I hope that you guys are doing what you need to do to protect your mental health. I hope that you guys, you know, hopefully y'all went to club quarantine like me. Shout out to D Nice, who is my local DJ. I'm going, I go to the originals parties here. Usually it's monthly in New York City where him, who else is the, is the other DJs there? Okay, so it's D Nice, Tony Touch, Clark Kent, um, Bobito. I feel like it's five and I feel like I'm missing somebody. I can see him. I'm going to look it up because I don't want to mix, mix this up. But there's a party here in New York 
it's there it's called the originals um and we usually go once a month it's usually sold out if you don't buy your tickets in advance you're not gonna get it and so d nice broke the internet the other day rich medina there it is i had to look at his face although i saw him in my mind but i had to look at his face to remember his name so it's d nice bobito clark kent tony touch and rich medina and so they all DJ these parties once a month and they do this really big thing in Central Park that if you've been following me for a while, you've seen. But yeah, he's been doing this five day dance party. Michelle Obama was there uh, or was on the live. Oprah, Gail, who else? Elizabeth Warren. I heard Joe Biden was on it. It's just ridiculous. Um, Stevie Wonder yada yada like anybody and everybody Quincy Jones was there like it was really really dope and so like you know this is what my friends have been doing I, I really feel like this is a good time for God to just really slow us down as a country I really feel like this was the way that we are supposed to check in with one another and check in on ourselves and love one another um so that we can really do what we need to do this has really slowed me down i've slept more than usual without guilt to be honest with you i'm um a little bit more relaxed more in tune with with my body i've been very intentional about what i what i do what i watch what i eat because you know i'm going out to go shopping i've actually wrote lists um so yeah i've actually been able to do the things that i, I needed to do so it, it's it's been really good for me but i know that for a lot of you guys out there it hasn't been good for, for you guys i do miss going to therapy i think i'm gonna check in with my therapist this week um if you guys are therapists i'm gonna check in you check in with your therapist if you guys have therapists check in with your therapist because some of us are not okay. Some of us don't have the financial resources to really weather this storm. And although, you know, some of us are going to tell a mental health route, my consulting job, after five days of debating with the insurance companies, decided that we would no longer go into hospitals. Duh, hospitals weren't letting us in. And we would no longer go into people's homes. Duh. We shouldn't have been there anyway because we're a risk to, to their households, right? and elderly parents that we would go to a telemental health space so finally we figured this out on monday on um, how we're going to really start to go back to work but again you know i was just like it is what it is it is it, it is it is what it is i know that i have the luxury to say that but i know that some people listening probably don't have that luxury shout out to the class of 2020 shout out to nani eve taylor i always mess it up Nani, Noni, Nani, girl, you, you, my sis, I put it like that. Shout out to her because she's one of the, the seniors graduating this year. Um, This really sucks. Like, you know, my son has a job waiting for him that we don't know what's going to happen now in a month when he was supposed to start. Like, it's a lot of things that are going on. And I know for, for a lot of people, your mental health is really difficult to maintain during these times. That said, oh, that was a long intro. I feel like it was an introduction. I feel like it was a purging. So I am in several mental health groups. And in one of these groups, there is a young lady who uh, her tag is Dr. Kelsey Leanne. There's a lot of judgments about her. There was this whole thing on social media in one of my groups about her i'm not really going to get into it i don't know what the what the thread okay the thread on twitter if you you want to dig through it was by somebody named taylor in chief the prototype and i think the hashtag is hashtag dr kelsey leanne um but basically what the discussion was in some of the groups that I was in around was about this young lady who was 22 years old. And I'm just going to read the, the first 
tweet that I see. Her threads were interesting, so I followed. But then I also then I realized Dr. Kelsey Leanne is likely frauding you all. And so basically, it was about this girl who calls herself a doctor. She sells treatment plans. She has a book. She has a large following on YouTube, I guess. Um, she had a large following on Instagram, I guess. I'm not really sure what characterizes a large following. She's in one of the groups that I'm in. I remember her just basically saying that her book came, came out and it was a success in a, in a week or something like that. I don't know. Honestly, I don't really pay anybody else <laughs> that much of a mind in these groups because it, a lot of the clinicians that I know in these groups, they they're making all of this exorbitant amount of money. I don't disbelieve that there's a lot of money to be made in mental health. There really truly is. But I don't know when I look at some of the people who say they're making the money that they claim they're making. If I look at their business models, I don't know if the business model makes it make sense. If you get what I'm saying. And I hope there's not like a lot of background noise because I'm I'm doing laundry. Guys, I got to get this laundry done. Quarantine, but we got to be clean. OK, so <laughs> so anyway, um, I was in several of my groups and I just kept seeing her name come up and people were, were calling her a fraud and people were um, saying she people were making jokes about her. They made memes. Ooh. Well, apparently one girl posted the, that the girl was a fraud in several different groups. Yikes. Okay, so I'm just going to read one of the posts that I found online. For the past year, I fell, I mean, she misspelled it, but fell in love with this psychologist, Dr. Kelsey Leanne. Her biggest focus in, is childhood trauma. That is not limited to just that. Anxiety, unhealthy boundaries, and relationships, and healing for the past are a few topics she touched based on. But y'all, she has a workbook that's similar to cognitive behavioral therapy, and it's only a freaking dollar. So, um, you know, I do see that she's, she's built a following. I think that that's that's cool I don't think it is cool if she's building a following on a lie and basically oh is this the same girl so basically the girl went and the girl who believes that this woman is a fraud went around and posted in other groups number one I don't know why she felt the need to to do all of that unless she's just really passionate about mental health professionals being professional uh, about mental health <laughs> um it feels kind of messy and so that you know a lot of women in some of the groups that I was in came to her defense because they felt like hey this is messy and it doesn't need to to be messy because we as black women we need to support one another but you gotta have your credentials like I got street cred and credentials and you you can't rush it my relationship that I have with my therapist and the relationship that clients have with me is a very intimate space and I don't practice things that I don't know about I don't practice stuff that I wasn't trained for I don't I, I don't profess to know something that I don't know if I don't know I don't know right and I and and even though I have my license I have my credentials I have my education I am not perfect I come to this work with with what I have my traumas my black skin my my womanhood my hoodness I come to this work bringing bring it to it everything that I am and so for a lot of clients or some clients you know I'm not the perfect clinician for them and I get that and I allow my clients to have the space to choose the, the perfect clinician that could 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 assist them but I think this is a dual thing. It's so strange. Like she's a Christian counselor and she was getting her bachelor's degree at the same time she was getting her doctorate, but she never got a bachelor's degree. And her father was just y'all Google it. My point to even bringing this up is that all everybody that professes themselves to be 
something online are not what they say they are. And it's up to you to do your due diligence to make sure you know who you are giving your money to, who you are giving your time to, who you are listening to, because it is it's very easy to be swindled and sucked into somebody who wants to just tell you whatever you want to hear, especially when you are trying to heal from trauma, especially when you are going through something. You definitely need to make sure that the person you are listening to has the credentials and can actually do what they say they can do. Now, I won't doubt that this young woman probably had good intentions, right? But I also don't know why y'all didn't figure out that she probably wasn't a doctor at 22 when she says that she's working on her bachelor's degree and her doctor degree at the same her doctorate or PhD or whatever it is at the same time. I don't know why people were listening to her. I mean, I, you know, I've been on her. I've actually been on her website before this just because she had come up in several groups. But y'all got to do better. Y'all got to do better at vetting the people that you work with. I'm I'm disgusted and disappointed that there were clients that actually worked with this woman. And if you listen to her videos or watch her YouTube, maybe I'm just from New York. Like New Yorkers could kind of smell a scam. I don't know, but like it wasn't making any sense. If you meet a a doctor or a therapist, you could just go on the state board and Google them. Anybody that says that they are licensed, certifications are not licensed. I have certifications out the behind. Those that's not my license. My license is a, a state governing board and body who allows me to meet the minimum standards of requirements to be licensed. There are plenty of practitioners who are not even licensed and, and they could run circles and rings around me. I'll say that. And that's just because they've been in the field for a very long time, but they didn't take the test for whatever reason. But what I'm telling you is that I, and, and the, the thousands of other people who have paid their money, who have taken their time, who have invested in their future, who have invested years and hours of sacrifice to become a licensed mental health professional, you can't stick, skip no steps. And it's not in the best interest of our clients that you skip steps. If you listen to that horribly edit show, <laughs> edited show, from weeks ago when I, I discussed my issues with interns, shout out to my interns who are also struggling throughout this time because now I'm being asked to find them offline assignments. And baby, I don't, I, I, I don't know how we gonna really get mandates to do teletherapy, but we gonna we gonna see if 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 it works. If it works, we'll see. But um, go on the state board and look and see if your therapist is licensed in the states that they say that they're in. I told you I'm licensed in New York, New Jersey, Georgia, and pending in Florida. I've been pending in Florida forever, but that's on me. That's not on them. But um, as a matter of fact, I'll call Florida tomorrow to, to see what's going on with that. But on, on the three websites that I am licensed on, you can go in, put my first name, my last name, and my credentials will pop up. And that's for any other therapist that you're going to. Child, I didn't, I didn't go through this whole thread, but I'm looking at it now. And obviously, it's a mess. And I'm seeing some people on here that I know. Child. Anyhow, um, if you are a student and you want to be a mental health professional, you know that your path will lead you to an LCSW or an LPC or, you know, and those L stands for licensed or to go into private practice or LMSW or whatever your credentials will, will be once you get those credentials, right? And not a doctorate that you bought. Child, I know some people who bought their doctorates. And when I say bought your doctorate, I mean like a honorary doctorate. I, I That's a whole nother matter. Because there, I know some people who running around saying they doctors and they bought that. But I just let them go on because they, they're not treating anybody that I care about. Or they're not treating anybody that I know. They're just using the credentials like, you know, Dr. Sean Combs, right? But um, shout out to Puffy. That wasn't a, that wasn't a shade, but I'm just saying like he has a he has an honorary doctorate degree, 
and he doesn't even have a bachelor's degree, although, you know, he's winning at life. Um, if you are a student and you are on that path and you know that eventually you will get your license, I'm not telling you and, and, and the, the students that I work with, I do often tell them that you should prepare for the career that you want. But that's be honest. Tell people that you are a student. Tell people that you this is what you're working on. You build your online following and your podcast as a student. Build your your online following and your podcast as somebody who's a mental health advocate. Build your online following as, you know, somebody who could speak from a mental health experience from whatever your experience is. You don't have to wait until you get your PhD or your PsyD or your LMSW or LCSW or MSW or BSW in order to build your 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 audience, right? People love to see your journey. You can document your journey while you're going through it, but don't lie. Like how she's selling treatment plans when she's not even licensed to treat anybody. And clinicians, how was y'all buying this girl's treatment plans? I mean, quiet is kept. Anybody that comes to me and say they do whatever they say they do, especially when it's in the mental health field, I'm doing the Googling. I'm hitting up the the state board website. I want to see. And if you don't pop up, you and I have another conversation because I do take this seriously. So the whole incident online with Kelsey Leanne or whatever her name is, um, it, it made me think about recently I was... I was actually asked to contribute to an article for Insta therapy. And I think that, first of all, I didn't really know what they were talking about. And then I had to think about it. Am I, do I have to consider myself an Insta therapist? I mean, yes. Yeah. So basically, what Insta therapy is, is therapists using and utilizing social media to raise awareness for mental health disorders right so of course i have a pretty large following on ig i do this podcast where we have a lot of listeners i don't consider myself an insta therapist but i guess i can see why this term is kind of catching on and and really for me it's instances like tongue twister instances like this right where there is an online therapist, I'm using air quotes, but you can't see it, or someone who is a mental health advocate and they are advocating for particular types of treatments and therapies and stuff that just worked for them, right? And so a lot of times that we we pick these mental health advocates or we pick these, um, how shall I say, not mental health advocates, professionals, right? experts, love experts, relationship experts, etc. right? We pick these people just based off of personality and marketing. But a lot of times we, we're not asking ourselves, does this person actually do the work, right? There are plenty of therapists who are coaches. Some of them do like business coaching. Some of them are doing um, uh, social media coaching, right? To show you how to build your following, etc. And when you go and you look on their pages, they don't have the following that they say that they have. They don't have the the credentials to to justify that they are actually a professional in the way that they are that they say that they are. And so we live in a world where people are building their reputation on what they say. Right. And people are just kind of going by faith there there is a, my favorite quote about faith which is faith is the act of acting as if so even in even when it is not so so it will be so right but when i look at a lot of the insta therapists or online therapists who are really doing this work a lot of people fronting a lot of people's lying about their lifestyle, what they do, what how they're living, what they're earning, and not really, you know, walking the walk, right? And there's a part of us that are just human, and and we will, we will struggle, and we will fail, and we will 
have new adversities and things come into our lives that we challenges that we've never had to deal with. I've never dealt with a pandemic before. Right. I'm literally going a little stir crazy. I've never had to be in my house this much before. Involuntarily, like it's kind of voluntarily, but it's not voluntarily. But like you know, so like this is not something that I've ever dealt with before. There's there's specific illnesses that I've never had. I've never really been been sick. Thank God, I knock on wood. I've never really had to deal with certain issues in my life, and so for me, as they may arise, they may present specific challenges to me that I haven't had in the past, and so. That while therapists are people too, we we have to start thinking about what we're buying into based on a social media or we'll say social media or a social media platform, a social media following, or just because other people are following. Just because somebody else is doing it doesn't make it the right thing thing to do. And we really need to start to think about it. I hate the term insta therapy. Um I'm reading an article about what they what they called insta therapy. I don't agree with this article. I'm reading an article on psychology today, and I'm just gonna read the top five things about insta the problems six problems with insta therapy. The first thing it says Instagram therapy requires spending more time on Instagram. Absolutely not. You follow whoever you want to follow. You agree with what you agree with. You take away what you could take away from the message and then you go away. Basically, what Insta, Instagram therapy is, and I, don't, I hate that term, first of all. Instagram can be therapeutic, but it is not therapy. There's no substitute for therapy but therapy, right? So for me being sitting on Instagram, I may see something that makes me laugh. It may make me smile. It may it may bring um, awareness to an issue that I didn't know ab- about. It may educate me. It may allow me to see myself in someone else's story. It may bring me closer together and build community, but it is not therapy. It is therapeutic. It is not therapy. I've said this before, you know, when I talked about Ayala, Ayala's show is therapeutic. It is not therapy. Everything is not, is not the same thing. Religion can be therapeutic. Drinking a glass of wine from Nikita Banks can be therapeutic. It is definitely not therapy. Therapy is therapy. That's when I meet with my, my therapist and we have a conversation and he does his job. That's what that is. So I disagree with that. Number one. Number two, Instagram therapy is non-specific. From what I saw, Instagram therapy posts are fairly broad, even when applied to a specific conceptualization of an issue. Yeah, it is. Like, I don't I don't find that that's a fair criticism. I think it's. It's an accurate portrayal of what you see on 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 Instagram, but I don't Instagram therapy is non specific. That's Instagram therapy is not oh, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not gonna call it Instagram therapy again. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna even use that term again, but I'll just call it IT for right now. <laughs> IT because I can't think of anything else to call it because that's the term in this article. But the DSM five is non specific. Right. Symptoms of COVID is nonspecific. It may be a cough. It may be it may be a dry cough. It may be a fever. You may not have a fever. You may be asymptomatic. So it's not. Any no therapeutic issue is one size fit all. It it may fit a specific criteria, but when you peel back the layers of the client's life experience, they're going to all be different. So, yes, informational uh, infographics, education, psychoeducational information is all specific. I mean, I'm sorry, it is all non-specific. It is all educational and it's all painted with a broad stroke so that you can see yourself within it. But that that's anything. And if I don't want any specific information on Instagram because that excludes number one that excludes people number two it doesn't educate the the 
large audience who's listening and listening in. Number three, it may eliminate people that actually should be included in the conversation. And it's literally there just to educate. It is not therapy. There is no diagnosing that happens on Instagram. And if there is, that's, if you're getting your diagnosis from Instagram, then you, we, get, we got another conversation to talk about. Okay. IG posts seem overly ideological. Oh man, I don't like the, her word choice. Ideological and lean towards superficiality. Ideological. Well, I don't know if that's a critique, but yeah, people want to see things on Instagram that either makes them feel really good or it it gets a reaction out of them. So that has nothing to do with anything but marketing a product. I don't know. Then they have this picture of this person's Instagram. The caption that they use, internalized capitalism feels like never allowing yourself space for pleasure. The fat sex therapist. Shout out to the fat sex therapist. I have no idea who you are. Um, this is not this is a quote, an ideological perspective that might be helpful to many, but not attuned to the individual reading it. I'm reading it and I don't understand it. Internalized capitalism feels like never allowing yourself the self safe space for pleasure. I'm going to read the caption because I don't know what she's talking about. For folks based in the U.S. and anywhere that's influenced by Christian colonialism. You'll recognize the messages we hear about pleasure and purity. We hear identical messages around abstaining from sexual pleasure and food pleasure as measured ways to attain spiritual and moral purity. Okay, I agree with that. This is not a coincidence. When capitalism is mixed with Christian colonial understandings of morality because capitalism ranks and devalues bodies. Okay, she lost me. Based on their ability to conform to an all beast standard, parlaying worthiness to the bodies that can produce profit under capitalism. Y'all, I'm not using enough of my SAT words in my post, I guess. These words is too big for me. I'm a little girl from the hood. Although I got certificates from big schools on my wall. Um... Christianity, when used for the purpose of colonialism, also ranks and devalues bodies based on their purity. And OK, so there was more than this, but I'm not going to read it. Um, I guess she's speaking to her audience. I don't think that I'm her audience, but she she had almost you know, 54,000 likes on it. So clearly whoever she was talking to liked what she was saying. And I think that's the point of posting on Instagram. No, I think she, she, she started a conversation from her own perspective. I don't feel like it's ideological, but of course she's speaking from her perspective of Whatever the topic is that she's talking about, internalized capitalism, it sounds like fat shaming. It sounds like pleasure and morality and purity. I'm not her audience. I, don't, I mean, she's not talking to me, but I don't have a problem with just scrolling about it and not judging it. I suggest you guys do the same. Uh, Instagram therapy posts are one way. Ugh, I said it again. Oh, brother. So basically the complaint is that the person posted and then people don't reply. This comment has over 40,000 likes and an open can of comments. And clearly you, you can't you can't reply to everyone in the comments. It's not for you to 
reply to. Like therapists do psychoeducation, right? Google it, look it up. Psychoeducation is literally just to educate you about psychological topics, give you information about things that you should be aware of. Instagram therapy is only psychoeducation. It is a marketing tool to market your business, but it is psychoeducational. What was that? So I was up to five. IT posts might lead to complications and mismanagement of serious illnesses. Listen, I hope nobody is listening to everything that I say as gospel. I pray to God that neither one, none, nobody listening here believes that everything that I say is is directed at any one of you. If you see yourself in some of the things that I say, great. I use this show as a tool only to educate. If y'all notice, I talk more about me and my own problems than anybody else else's. Just so you know that I am a therapist who has a therapist too, right? So, you know, my goal in being a therapist on the podcast, on Instagram, on social media is just to deconstruct therapy for people who thought that they would never have access, would never have access to a therapist who actually understands their particular issues. I think a lot of times what ends up happening is, is that we as therapists, we become so removed from the issues and we want to buy into this idea that we are an authority on everything just because we went to school. That's not what this is. I'm really, really good at what I do as a therapist. And what I do as a therapist is very different than what I do on online because I don't know each of you and I don't know each of your issues. When you reach out to me and you DM me, my my goal is not to provide you therapy. My goal is to provide you comfort and comfort and support. My goal is always to get you to, to find a therapist that you like, to get you to try therapy, to get you to be open to the therapeutic process and giving a, a therapist a chance. Even if you've gone to therapy before, even if you had a therapist that you felt like didn't understand you, even if you hated therapy in the past, because I've been there and done all of that. But but me getting and having a life that I loved, me overcoming the issues that I had, me being able to attain the skills that I needed that I wasn't able to get from my mother and my father, not because they didn't love me, but just because they only gave me what they had was worth me going to continue to try therapy even when I felt like it failed me in the past. And so this whole situation with homegirl online and portraying herself as a therapist and a professional and she wasn't, I want you guys to be diligent about who you who you seek advice from seek wise counsel the bible says i mean i don't often quote the bible but it's a thing you know what i'm saying so you have to make sure that who you are are allowing and i said this before but i'm gonna say it again who you are allowing in your intimate spaces are worthy of that that access if if these times of being quarantined tell tells you nothing but be careful who you allow to have access. And if they're not going to keep you healthy and if they're not going to keep you safe and they are not going to value you and they're not going to treat you with love and respect, then you you do not have to disclose anything that you do not want to with them, whether it's online, whether it's in person. I didn't go to my first therapy appointment and tell my therapist all my business. I need to know that he was worthy of that information first. I needed to know if there was trust that could be built there first. I needed to know if he was actually the kind of person that could could help me solve my problem and if he would be able to provide me the proper support. I am speaking really fast. Sorry about that. (laughs) I wanted to make sure that he was going to be able to really be able to honor the information that I was giving him. Okay, and yeah, so I get that, you know, we didn't, people were like, no, we're not going to drag her because she's another doctor. I mean, she's another black woman, yada, yada. But sometimes, sometimes when y'all going out there and y'all show y'all behinds, you just make it look bad for all of us. And what we cannot as black people 
have is people out here defrauding our people, especially when it comes to mental health, because we know the stigma, we know the drama, we know the trauma, we know the issues that we face, we know the barriers to treatment that our clients have, that our community has, that our family has to health, right? I started this conversation by saying mentally, this whole coronavirus is going to impact our people. If it's not financially, if it's not if it's not just mentally, if it's not just the lon- the sheer loneliness of being home, if it's not going to highlight all of your insecurities, food, housing, financial, emotional, if it's not going to bring up and trigger all of your stuff and you don't have the wherewithal to know that investing in your mental health is now the time that you need to do this then this is an issue. I want you guys to be aware that there are plenty of love experts or relationship experts or mental health experts or whatever is that that are not what they say that they are. And don't ever allow that to deter you from getting what you need to get. There are a lot of people that will look at this thread and that will look at this conversation and be like, see, I told you Mental health is is this or those people are that they don't really want to help us. All they thinking about is their money and making. Yeah. okay, we all got light bills, but that don't have nothing to do with anything. For me, I've invested 18 years of my life in my education, 18 whole years to get my degree, to get to where I am. I do deserve to live a good life. I do deserve to to be able to feed my family. But I also know that I usually don't get paid what I deserve. I also know because I'm a black woman and because this is a woman dominated field and because it's mental health and because we live in a reactive, not a proactive comp- country, hint coronavirus, that I'm never really going to get what I truly deserve to get into this unless I find another way. And this podcast ain't paying me a dime so far. It's nice to be recognized, but coins would be nice too. <laughs> shoot me a cash app how about that but you know I, I think that we all have to start really being mindful about who we allow in all into all of our intimate spaces I feel like if COVID is teaching me anything that's one of the lessons that I've learned in this quarantine is that I have to be very diligent about who I allow into my intimate spaces whether it's my home whether it's my breathing space, whether it's my personal space, whether it's my mental health, whether it's what comes on my TV, every single thing that I do, what I'm eating is very intentional because I know I'm going outside one time for the week and I got to make it last. I got to hit this, 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 and this, and I got to go pick up this, 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 and this. Like this is the really the time for us to really be making intentional decisions about our life and what it's going to look like in the next three three months or two months or months or years now like this is really where we can start intentional life planning and so I'm having this conversation with you because if there is anybody who saw this thread or you messy boots who gonna go look at the thread on twitter going on twitter (laughs) y'all um just know that there are a plethora of qualified mental health professionals who are working through this current time and through this current challenge to help make sure that all of us are good. Okay. So I actually, I'm starting a a new job. It's not a job job, but I'm starting a a new referral within my service, within my proact, my, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm starting a new referral service within my private practice tomorrow. So I got to take my behind the bed. But, um, you know, I really want to make more time to to be present and to speak to you guys and to see what's going on and to see how you guys are maintaining because, yeah, I know that we're going to be all right. But but there's a lesson in this and it's a blessing in this and we have to figure out what, what it is. Okay. So I will see you online Um, because the damn show ain't going to see you. (laughs) I'm not going to see you outside. Uh, But, you know, I hope everybody is staying safe. Everybody is practicing social distancing. Everybody is checking in on, on your family. Everybody is checking in with your loved ones. And you are making complete sure that you are thinking about how you affect others in what you do. It's not just you going out to go to the store. It really is 
you know, who will I come in contact while I'm out here? If I'm sick, if I have the flu, if I have whatever you you think you have. And there are a lot of people walking around who have the coronavirus and they don't even know what they have. So, I mean, I really, truly want you guys to stay safe and I want you to keep your family and your friends safe. And I definitely want you guys to really be taking care of yourselves. OK, I know we will get through this, but practice some self-care this week. Uh, I have I didn't get no work done this weekend to be honest with you I saw a few clients and that was really it but obviously remotely via telemental health <laughs> couldn't think of the, the word but but yeah I, I really you really truly will be okay okay this is another episode of Black Therapist Podcast I feel like I was all over the place I hope that you guys are happy that I'm back I'm happy that I'm back Next week, I definitely want to talk about um, self-made. So if you want to go on Netflix and Netflix and chill with me to watch self-made about Madam C.J. Walker. Some of you guys know I was a licensed hairstylist ever since I was in high school. I took it in place of my math and my science because you math and science. And so um, I definitely want to watch it and we'll talk about entrepreneurship next week hopefully okay all right oh and i have some other stuff to tell you we have some shows coming up i want to come back to you now now that i have time to actually do this i want to make it a priority so that you guys have something to listen to so that everybody's not going crazy through this through this time hit me up on instagram hit me up on email at black therapist podcast on ig and black therapist podcast dot com and black therapist podcast at gmail.com i answer all of my emails i respond to you on social media i am back on social i have kind of taken a break for a while i needed to get my energy up but i am back okay all right see you next week bye Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Black Therapist Podcast. Once again, you can follow us on all our social media sites at Black Therapist Podcast on Instagram and on Twitter, as well as Black in Therapy on Facebook. Or you can follow your host, me, Miss M-S-N-I-K-I, thanks, on Instagram and Twitter, as well as you can find out any information about me at Nikita, N-I-K-I-T-A, banks.com, and on the show's website, Black Therapist podcast.com and don't forget if you want to send us any general feedback show suggestions uh, show topics or guest ideas please feel free to drop us an email at blacktherapistpodcast at gmail.com thank you be well